Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kenya, and today we are going to be following another YouTuber's makeup tutorial because who wouldn't want to? And we want to see if it's achievable, achievable to see if I can actually follow this tutorial and get a bum look and comparable to what they are doing. So if you want to see who I am going to be doing and who I'm doing, who I'm going to be following, and if I can achieve a beautiful look, then just keep on watching. I had a boogie in my nose. Okay, so we're going to be following Raven Elise. She just dropped the video, and I love her makeup. I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve it. I'm going through a little breakout section with my eczema, so shouldn't be putting on makeup. But we're still going to do it. We're going to follow her makeup tutorial. But first thing first, before we start this tutorial, I want to go ahead and apply something to get my lips all moisturized and I'm going in with the Bio Radiance <laughs> Bio Radiance Bio Suns with Rose Squalene and Rose Vegan Lip Balm really love it really love their products so I'm going to go directly in and just get this on my lips So about time, I'm ready to apply products to my lips. She will be moisturized. So, let's pull up her video. It's going to be in one of my corners. So, let's just see what she's going to be telling us. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a good old fashioned makeup tutorial. I literally have not done a video like this. I do makeup tutorials, but I guess I should explain what look we're doing. This is going to be a full glam, full coverage beat, but it is going to lean more on the natural neutral side. So we're not doing any crazy eyeshadow or anything like that. All natural colors, but it is going to be you know, it's going to be a full beat. Okay. So this is like what I do when I'm going out, when I'm about to shoot some content, when I really want to just, you know, give when the look needs to give, this is kind of like my recent go-to look. Of course, first thing is to start off with a very clean face. I just, uh, tried to reattach my wig. So I had some hairspray on my face, but make sure all that is clean. I just washed and exfoliated my face before that though. You guys also ask about my skin a lot because if you're an OG, you know that I used to suffer with really severe cystic acne. And um, obviously I don't have like the severe cystic acne anymore. I did go on Accutane. I have a lot of videos about it if you need to get caught up. But you know, I still have acne prone skin. I still don't have perfect skin. I'm just not somebody who will ever have perfect skin, I don't think. I get dark marks and hyperpigmentation and I have melasma around my mouth, but for the most part, I don't break out with those really bad breakouts anymore. But you know, I don't have perfect skin, so I do like to do a full coverage beat. Um, but it all starts with the skincare. So first thing I'm gonna do is moisturize. I actually really like, oh my God, look. How can I start this video? Do I have moisturizer over here with me? Let me see, what is this? <laughs> I got one. So I'm gonna go in with the Biosense Squalene Omega Repair Cream. My face is dry, my body is dry. We need some moisture and I'm going to use this. Not too much. But we're gonna keep on playing a video. The old fashioned, put your hand behind the product to show the product, it's, it's so nostalgic. But um, I actually really like this Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream Moisturizer. It's expensive, this is a high-end product. It was gifted to me, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I would not have normally just gone out and bought this. But since it was gifted to me, of course I tried it. 
and I do kind of see the hype. I'm not going to lie. It's a really, really special moisturizer. Um, there's probably dupes out there. I don't know what the dupes are, but if you're willing to splurge, I do recommend this Charlotte Tilbury moisturizer. And I will have all the products linked for you guys. Um, I'll probably do the QR code that I've been doing, and I will also have just the regular links that you can click on down in the description box. Then I also like to go in with a priming spray. It just makes my skin feel. Okay, she's going in with, going in with a primer spray, but I am going to go in with, well, I'm going to be using Fenty Foundation. So we might as well take it all the way. Not use that. I'm gonna use, which one is this? I'm going to go in with the Fenty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer. And we'll keep on playing. Extra hydrated and extra prepped for makeup. This is the Urban Decay Quick Fix Hydro Charge Complexion Prep Priming Spray. It has niacinamide, coconut water. It's just a hydrating spray, basically. And it smells good and it feels refreshing and it just feels like I'm getting my face ready for makeup. There's a whole bunch of different like brands and types of hydrating sprays that you can get. Doesn't necessarily have to be that one. Do I want to start with lashes? I think I want to start with lashes because I'm actually going to go in and basically do DIY um, like individuals or whatever you call it, like the Falscara. If you don't know about Falscara, where have you been? Um okay, so... You already probably seen that video of where I use Falscara. Crazy girl, I love some Falscara. So, I got it right here. And instead of doing individuals, I don't think I have any individuals. Wait, yes I do. Which one is these? Short. Then I got the Ardell's. I don't want to use either one of those. But I do want to use some strip lashes. You don't think I'm crazy? But I want to go in with the Kiss Lash Couture Masterpiece One of a Kind Lux Lashes. And I got mine in Hulk Couture. And they're Fox Mink. So, got these out of CVS. So, with this, God dang it, my hands are slippery. So, I'm going to go in with the Bond. I'm going to apply this on my lashes. Okay, this is pretty sticky. Let's chug it up in the front. Okay. Now I got my lashes. So. I'm going to get I'm going to take these out now. I don't want to come out. Why is it giving me so much trouble? Okay. First one. Oops. That's the other one. Okay. So with these, I'm going to hold my lash up. Hold my eyelid up. And I'm just going to Stick this underneath. Bring this up close so I can see. I don't think it's going to be able to work. Or do I need to scoot these over a little bit?
Now I'm going to take the tweezers and just push it down. Let's get the other one on. Okay, got the lashes on. I don't know if these are meant to be like this. No, they're not. But they're pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and take the seal side and just seal these in. They're pretty. So now, let's see what she does next. Um, it's all the rage this season. If you're a lash extension girly, but you want to be able to do it for cheaper at home, this is the Falscara product. It's basically a glue that you brush onto your lashes and then you stick on these little individual lashes underneath and then you seal it with the other product on the other side. Now, this does come as a full set with its own lashes that go with it, but... I recently ordered these lashes off of Amazon 
from this random Amazon brand. And I really like these. I tried them for the first time the other day. And it's just a really cute style. It's a set that comes in a bunch of different lengths. So I did kind of a short to long look. So I'm gonna do that again. Last time I did it, I did my full face of makeup. And then I went in and applied these lashes last. But I felt like, you know, my lashes were dirty from it situated together, yeah, like squeeze darkness around my mouth. I have dark spots on my face. It doesn't really dry down by itself all the way. So that's why you have the seal side. This other product on the other side is like a clear product that you're supposed to put on afterwards so that it doesn't stay sticky. But this part can be kind of tricky because then it can kind of get kind of gunked up with the sealant and you can kind of see it. So I try to just use this spear sparingly. So that's the lash. And with these, with this bond, people say it can last for like a week. Some people are like, I wear them for two weeks. I wear them for 17 days, whatever. For me, really and truly with just this product sticking it on, maybe four days. Maybe four days, realistically, I could keep these lashes on. It's hard to keep them on when you're washing your face and wearing makeup and taking off makeup and doing all these things. Like, it's not that secure. It's definitely more secure than your regular, normal, everyday lash glue or whatever, but it's not that secure, in my opinion. Okay, so I just went ahead and did my other eye off camera. So now I have my lashes on. Again, I didn't do it this way last time, so hopefully I don't gunk up my lashes too much through doing the rest of my makeup, but we shall see. So let's see, the next step is gonna be color correcting. So don't underestimate the power of color correcting. That's all I gotta say. I definitely have dark circles. I have darkness around my mouth. I have dark spots on my face. Yes, you can use a full coverage foundation, concealer, and try to cover it up, but it's really more about the color and just the color theory of it all. And so I feel like color correcting does really help. So I am gonna go in with the LA Girl Pro Conceal Color Correctors. I have this lighter one, which is in the shade Peach Corrector, and this darker one, which is Orange Corrector. Really, this one is more of my proper shade, but sometimes I feel like I need a little hint more of the oranginess, so I mix in a little dot of this. But I just go straight in, definitely on my dark circles, just right directly on that darkness, anywhere that I see that kind of purplish, bluish. Okay, so since she is using a color corrector. I don't have any color correctors, but I do have plenty of concealer. So I'm gonna go in with the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the shade Fawn. Yep, this one I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna go through and start dabbing over all of these pimples. Because you think it's good. Looking stupid. And you can't do nothing about it. So, we're just going to keep on watching while I do this. Gray tone on my face. I'm going to go in with this color corrector. Including any acne marks dark spots across my face as well. Sometimes I just do this one on its own, but I'm gonna mix in a little bit of this darker one just to make it a little more orange, like red orange. The red orange cancels out the blue purple. So that's kind of the science behind it. So you wanna make sure it's actually like orange, like red. And it's gonna look crazy at first, but when you're about to use full coverage products on top of it, it's not gonna matter. This is just like canceling out the darkness. So I'm just gonna go in with this Real Techniques. Um, this is actually a contour brush, I suppose, but just some sort of like fluffy, small fluffy face brush to lightly tap this in. Of course, I don't wanna completely blend it away because the whole point is for it to cancel out the darkness. So I kinda of want it to just be like a layer sitting on top but a very thin layer because we're trying to avoid being cakey as much as possible. You may also notice that I did not go in with an actual primer, like any sort of like squeeze out cream type primer. I just did the primer spray on top of my moisturizer. And that's because like, I don't really care too much for primer. Sometimes I use them honestly, just because I don't normally see like a huge difference 
when I use them. I just like to make sure my face is hydrated and moisturized as far as priming. That's like the biggest thing to me. You do not want to be going in with all this makeup on a crusty face. <laughs> That's like the main thing. If your face is dry and flaky and crusty, your makeup is going to look horrible sitting on top of that. So the more hydrated, the better. You can always powder it down and Use a mattifying setting spray to make it look more matte at the end. But when you're going in with your makeup, you kind of want it to be a little bit greasy. You know, you want it to be a little moisturized so everything sits nicely, blends nicely. You don't want it to be dry at all. Okay, so now my face is looking very like peach tone, obviously. It looks crazy. This is a more extreme version because I'm doing a super full coverage, super full glam look. If I was doing a more natural look with a more natural foundation, I wouldn't want this part to look as extreme. I would want this part to blend into my skin tone more. So I would just go in with this lighter one and use less of it, make it like a really sheer, like blended in layer. But since I'm doing like a full glam look, it's okay if I go a little bit ham. So now I'm ready to go in with my foundation. Lately, I've been really liking the House Labs foundation. This is Lady Gaga's makeup line. This is the Triclone Skin Tech foundation. I have it in two shades here, shade, 260 which is light medium cool and shade 270 which is light medium neutral um I feel like I'm kind of these are like the two shades that are right next to each other but I feel like I'm almost like in between them so I tend to kind of mix them and it also depends on if I have self tanner on or not I don't really have any self tanner on right now so I'm a little bit lighter but sometimes I'm a little darker so I always just have to have like multiple shades of any foundation that I'm using um so I'm gonna end up using like a mix of these two but I really like this foundation I do also have the new makeup by Mario foundation that everyone's been raving about and I did try it and I do like okay like I said before I'm using Fenty Beauty and I'm using my Pro, Pro, bleh, Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation in the shade 385 and I did go back in with some of the pretty vulgar concealer she says just kind of blurred out a little bit more and I got it in the shade 63 middle brown so now we're gonna follow what she's using doing and i know she don't like um to use any beauty blenders anymore so i got brushes got plenty of brushes but i don't know about this so i'm gonna use my fenty foundation brush and if i don't want to keep using that i will go in with my real techniques brush also it I think but I think I just don't like the shade that I got I don't know I need to you know test it more and maybe figure out my exact shade like it's okay but like I don't know I just I like this one better for right now so I'm just gonna go in with the house labs foundation again I will link everything for you guys so you can check it out um, I'm mainly going to use shade 270 and mix in a little bit of the lighter shade, I think. Three pumps on the back of my hand. One pump, maybe two pumps of this lighter one. One and a half pumps. This is definitely like, I would say a full coverage foundation, but it's not super heavy. I just really like it. It has a nice finish to it. And I do also really like the brush that goes with it. This is the House Labs foundation brush. And that is what I apply it with. I'm not much of a beauty blender girl these days at all. Haven't been for a long time. I pretty much use brushes for everything. So I'm going to start by tapping the product across my whole face just to kind of get an even distribution of it first. Just placing it on. You'll notice that I did not do my eyebrows yet because I don't do my eyebrows first. I do my eyebrows later on purpose. That's just my preference. Also make sure you're applying down your neck. Because I don't care how good your foundation match is, it's not going to look right if you don't blend it down your neck. So now that I've got it kind of just placed across my face, I am going to start tapping it in to really blend it in. And I'm doing tapping motions. I'm not swiping across my face like a paintbrush. I'm just really tap, tap, tapping it in because I don't want to like mix the foundation into the color corrector that's underneath it and just start like like screw I don't know it just needs to be tapped on I don't know how to explain it but tap it on 
don't swipe it on. <laughs> That's my biggest piece of advice when it comes to foundation. Make sure you get all the little crevices, kind of go up into your ear a little bit so it's fully like seamless and blended. It's kind of hard when you have a lace wig on because you don't want to get too much makeup in your lace, but it also needs to be like blended as nice as possible right there. So I try to just get right up close to it as much as I can. And I try to go around my eyebrows without leaving a halo. Like I want the foundation to go right up to the hair without getting too much foundation in the hair, but it can be wiped off after anyway, so it's okay if I get a little bit of foundation in my eyebrows, but I try to avoid it if I can. But I'm not gonna be carving out my eyebrows with concealer or anything like that. So I need the foundation to really be you know, right up to the eyebrow. I am taking it across my eyelid a little bit just to make sure everything is blended. I'm trying to create like a smooth blank slate, like foundation, an even layer of foundation across my whole entire face, eyes, forehead, everything. I know a lot of people don't put makeup on their forehead, couldn't be me. This is a lot of real estate. She needs to be included. <laughs> and then blending down my neck. Now when I get to my neck, then I can drag because there's nothing down here preventing me from being able to drag. You know what I mean? And now I'm just kind of like dragging the little residual product, whatever's left on the back of my hand, dragging that down to kind of just blend it down a little bit. I'll drag it all down my chest. If I know my chest is going to be showing, include that a little bit too. Honestly, I'm gonna take my earrings off because I end up getting a lot of makeup on my earrings when I do this. And then I'll look and I'll see like, do I need more? You know, does this look like a really even layer? Is anything peeking through? Anything looking patchy? Do I maybe need a little bit more? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more of the lighter foundation, the lighter shade. Nothing that I can do this without having back in my hand dragging. Next, I'm going to go in with my cream contour. So I have been using this Juvia's Place. This is actually a concealer. This is in the shade 9. And honestly, these days, I just go straight in because I know this product is very... Okay, so that one's sticking. Maybe the one I got is old and need to go get a new one. But I'm going to go put some lash on the back of these real quick. Got that done. Okay, now let's get back to Raven. Blendable. I know I can go straight in with it on my face, but a lot of products like this are not as blendable. So it's better to put it on the back of your hand, dip your brush, kind of get a nice little blended dip, and then start putting it on your face so you can get a really nice blended diffused look instead of drawing lines on your face like I'm about to do. Sometimes when you do this, you can never blend away that line it doesn't blend out very good and you end up with this like weird patchy line on your face. I know this product is blendable, so I know that I can do this without having a problem. But if you're, if you're not sure, put it on the back of your hand, dip your brush, tap the brush on your face. That's gonna be a foolproof way to make sure it blends out good every time if you're not sure if you can trust your product or not. This product, I know I So I'm gonna use the color Truffle and the matchstick from Fenty. It's truffle. So she applied it up higher. Oops. Then she put some around. Oh, oh yeah. So now let's see what brush she used. Oh no, I went too far. You know, lifted face, high cheekbones, chiseled face. You want everything to be lifted, not dragged down. So I'm actually putting everything higher up than you would normally put it. And then I have a big forehead, so I'm just contouring that, darkening it so that it's not so just uh, egghead. I want it to look darker and bronzed and contoured. And again, it's kind of hard to blend this when I have a wig on because you can see that kind of line of demarcation. But you know what? It's a wig. Y'all know it's a wig. Okay. 
Everybody already knows that. It's fine. We will get over it. <laughs> and then you see what I did on my nose. Not too much. Wait, pause. I did not mark my nose. So, for the nose, what I do with my matchstick? She did here, here, here. Here and here. Okay. So let's just finish the news out. Hopefully, this is blended enough. I cannot tell. It's gonna blend out quite a bit, so we don't need to be drawing the full, like, I don't know, I just feel like sometimes less is more on the nose. I do like to connect the nose contour to the eyebrow, because you're following the real shape of your face. I can't get that up enough. So I'm trying to emphasize the way my nose kind of sticks out of my face. And it starts at the eyebrow. And it looks messy at first because I'm actually going to clean it up with the concealer after. Mainly I'm kind of just darkening my whole entire nose right now. And then I'll go in and like snatch it up with the concealer after this. I honestly don't really do too much on the jawline. I mean, I might just take whatever's left on the brush and kind of lightly go across the jawline, but that's not really my thing. Now we're going to go in with concealer. I like the Fenty Beauty Concealer, tried and true favorite. I'm using the shade 230 and this is definitely a brightening shade for me, but with all this dark stuff that I just applied, I want to, you know, complement it with a bright shade to really carve everything out. So, oh no, I almost forgot. A new thing that I just tried is actually going in with my blush before the concealer. So I'm going to do that. So I have this liquid blush by NARS. This is in the shade Orgasm, which is like a very like baby pink with kind of golden shimmers in it shade. And I really have been loving the super baby pink, you know, the Dior blush trend. The Ooh. Oh, it make a mix. So she's using NARS and she's also going to go in with NYX, but I'm taking NYX products because these are closest to the cream I got. Even though I want to try out Rare Beauty, but ain't made it to a sport. A sport is not near me. So I got both the Sweet Cheeks. I got mine in Corelicious and Showgirl. So, yeah. And let's just keep on going. Leah's Place blush, which I am going to be using today. This super like mm. light Barbie pink color and then like applying a lot of it high up on your face. I really like that look. So that's what we're going to be doing. And it starts with the base layer of some sort of liquid or cream blush. So I'm going to be using this NARS liquid and I think I'm actually going to amp it up by adding in a little bit of this NYX cream blush. This is the NYX Sweet Cheeks soft cheek tint in the shade baby doll so this is like more of a hot pink color if y'all can see that so i'm gonna mix these two together to get me like a really barbie pink look on the back of my hand maybe like three pumps of the nars liquid and then mixing in some of this like darker hot pink by NYX. And I'm going in with a fluffy round brush like this. This is just like a random IT Cosmetics brush. And I'm gonna go in and mix those two products together and get my brush evenly coated. This is what I was talking about with the contour. This is what I would normally recommend doing with your contour shade as well, but whatever. So now I'm going to put this really high up on my cheeks, like as high up under my eye as I can put it basically covering my whole entire like starting from right under my eye going 
up to my temple, basically. Now, this look is not for everyone. This is like a very blushy, blush focused look. And it's definitely like trendy right now, but I just really like it. So if you don't like all this blush, you don't have to do it like this. You could just do like the normal little on the apples of your cheeks, but this is what I've been doing lately. So I'm literally applying it like under my eye. You see that? Then I do a little bit on the top of my nose and a little bit, tiny bit on my forehead, tiny bit on my chin, just to like, you know, add some cohesion across the face. And now I'm gonna go in with my concealer on top of this and kind of almost like mix my concealer, my under eye concealer into the blush. So again, this is the Fenty Beauty in shade 230. It's a really brightening, bright color as you can see on me. And I'm going to strategically place it going up to the side of my nose of course, on my under eye, and then lift. Okay. Ooh. For concealer, I am going to use my Fenty Beauty Concealer in the shade 385. I don't know about this concealer look. But up the nose. And then she just flicks it up here. lift to the side but you see how i did it like right here next to my nose that's gonna help snatch the nose under eye and then lift a little bit for the bridge of my nose to kind of finish off okay so I'm gonna put some of this pretty vulva on top of this, just to give it just a little bit of a lightness. It's not too much. Light me up just a little bit. And then we're gonna go down the nose. Got it the nose contour and that's really all i do with concealer i don't do like you know how people do it like here 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 like all the highlighted spots i just do this these days and i like to let it set for a second shout out jackie Ina. i think she was one of the people who you know brought that to our attention to kind of let your concealer sit for a second so that you get the most like coverage out of it so kind of let it dry down in the meantime i'm actually going to wipe off my lips and start my lip prep, I like to go in with a lip plumper as like my prep before I do my lipstick later. And I have the, what is it? The Too Faced, the Too Faced, you know that, that I think it's Too Faced, right? That lip plumper that everyone normally uses. I have that one, it definitely works. But I saw a TikTok where this girl was talking about this one from Amazon and she was like, it's way better than the Too Faced one. It's way better than any lip plumper you can get off of Sephora. This was $9 on Amazon and it's in this like, cute little pill bottle thing. So I haven't tried this yet, but I wanna try it now for the first time. So let's see how good this lip plumper is. She said it was way more powerful than the one I normally use. Oh yeah, I can immediately feel the tingle. That's how you know it's working. So this will do two things. It'll moisturize my lips so that they're kind of like hydrated and ready for the lipstick later. But of course it's going to plump up my lips so that they look extra juicy when I do my lips later. Okay, so now I should be ready to blend out my concealer. And I'm actually gonna take this brush, which RIP is from the Collab makeup line. If you're an OG, you remember that I was a part of this um, brand. I helped create this brand with a group of other influencers and it was sold in Sally Beauty. I think it is still currently sold in Sally Beauty. I'm not a part of it anymore. Long story short, I don't know if I can still get this brush, but I really like this brush. Like you see the shape of it. It's a really unique shape that is just like perfect for under eye concealer and just like the texture of it. So I go in and I start tapping the concealer out, not dragging it all over the place because I want it to stay in the spot that I applied it. But of course I just want it to be blended out. So I'm going like down the side of my nose, under my eye and up. And it's kind of like, 
mixing into that blush right there and it gives like a really cute baby doll effect. But again, if you wanna tone this part down, use a concealer that's not as bright. Don't use as much blush. Don't drag your concealer up so high. There are ways that you can like tone it down, of course. And then I'm all about blending. So I keep the other brushes that I used handy so I can go back and kind of touch up the contour a little bit. Go back with the contour and then go back with the blush, especially the blush, because we're really trying to like blend the concealer into the blush. So I kind of like switch back and forth between all the brushes to make sure everything is kind of like a ombre from the concealer to the blush to the contour. Like Neapolitan ice cream, vanilla strawberry chocolate. I'm trying to avoid my lashes as much as possible. And then I'm gonna blend this out again, trying to just keep it right where I put it. Blend, blend, blend. Yo. When you think it's blended, it's not. Blend it again. Okay, now we're gonna do our first spray of setting spray. This is the Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist by e.l.f. I got that. Oh, I gotta get it. So, before I get it up, I'm gonna... Go back over this, touch all this up, then go back with the blush, brush that I use for the blush. Make sure you touch all of that up. Ah, looking her. Now she's going in, ooh, with the Elf Stay All Night Marco Fit Setting Spray. And we're going to keep on working. I like to use a lot of setting spray in between steps. So now that I have all of my creams on, and honestly, I should have sprayed my face after I put the color corrector on, cause that was really the first layer. Color corrector, that's your first layer, spray. Then you put your foundation and everything on, spray again. Then I'm gonna end up going in with powders and spray again. So I basically spray in between every like layer or every step pretty much, cause you can never have too much setting spray. It just melts everything together, it makes your makeup last longer, it makes it like more skin-like, it just, I just love setting spray. So I use a lot of setting spray in between steps. And I always keep a little fan from the Dollar Tree on hand so I can dry down my setting spray. I know they have those little battery operated ones, but who wants to worry about like recharging a fan? Just do it the old fashioned way. Make sure there's no creases under your eye or anything. Now I get creases under my eye no matter what because I have creases under my eye. You know what I mean? Like the makeup is not gonna make the creases that I have disappear. So I have creases without makeup, I have creases with the makeup. It just is what it is. So I don't really pay too much attention to that. Um, so don't ask me about how to prevent your under eye concealer from creasing, cause I don't know. But I'm gonna go in with the One Size Powder. This is Patrick Starr's makeup line. This is just in the translucent shade. And I'm gonna go in with, and I admittedly do not have a fresh clean one right now. <laughs> They're all dirty. But these little triangle powder puffs from Amazon, they have like almost like a velvety texture to it. Game changer for powdering. I don't know what it is but it does make a difference when you use this specific type of powder puff to set your face. I like to do a nice coat, but then tap it off like this so it's not too much. And then notice how I'm placing it up against my nose for that straight line here and then under the eye. And I'm pressing the powder in. Again, I'm tap, tap, tapping. I'm not dragging. And I'm not even really baking. I mean, there's a little bit of excess powder, but for the most part, it's all getting like fully tapped in. That's why I like to not get too much on the puff to begin with. Because I'm not really trying to bake. I just want it to be set. Set down. So I mainly go in on the sides of my nose and set my under eye. That's like the main thing. But then I will also go ahead and do like around my mouth and then do like this. You see how it like fits perfectly between the brows? Press that in, go down the nose, like that, 
and it's all pressing press 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 so i kind of set like the main center areas of my face with that but then i'll go in with a fluffy brush and a different like foundation powder that has more of a color to it to kind of do like the perimeter and everything else so i do also like the one size um turn up the so i do have some of the fit me matte and cordless I need to get the one from Fenty because pretty much all my face products have been Fenty except for the blush. But hey. Um, I think I'm going to use Truffle. This is Truffle and I got Golden Caramel. I think I'm going to use Truffle. Yep, Truffle. This foundation powder, this is in the shade Medium 5. So I use this a lot, but sometimes I feel like this may not be the exact shade that I need or something. The other day, I went back to using the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Powder, which is like a tried and true drugstore favorite. This is in the shade 310 Sun Beige. And I don't know, I just, I like this. So I'm gonna go in with this one, but some sort of like foundation powder like this and a big, soft, fluffy brush. And then I'll kind of go in like more on the sides of my face to set everything else. This is kind of to prevent my whole entire face from looking too ashy because sometimes the translucent powder can kind of give you like an ashy effect if you use too much of it over your whole face. So I like to go in with something that has like a little bit of color to it so it doesn't end up looking like too powdery and ashy. I need to set down my eyelids as well. It doesn't really matter. I can either use this powder or the translucent powder, whichever one, just some type of little bit of powder. So there are the powders on and you guessed it, setting spray again. And I feel like that kind of like locks in each layer before you go on top of it with another thing. Next thing I'm gonna go in with is powder bronzers or like powder contour. I like the Fenty Beauty bronzers. This is the Sunstalker bronzer in Caramel Cutie. I also like NARS bronzers. This is the Paradise Found bronzing powder. This particular NARS product is more of a sheer product. So I kind of like to go in with a big fluffy brush and just kind of like generally bronze up my face a little bit not being precise with it at all this is also good for like trying to bring a little extra color to my chest or whatever but then i go in with the fenty beauty bronzer which is darker and more pigmented and this is where i actually kind of like carve out my cheeks so i like to use this brush which is like so i got my bronzer favorite bronzer hula care male from Benefit Cosmetics, and she used an angled brush, and let's see. Fluffy, but kind of flat at the bottom, so it kind of gives you like that straight line, but like blended at the top. This is a Japanesque brush, Japanesque number 722, and kind of try to keep that sharp line underneath, but keep it blended on top, if that makes sense. And keep it more to the back of my face. I'm not bringing it too far in I'm keeping it more like towards my ear and towards my hairline and again not applying it too down low here more up so it gives that lifted snatched high cheekbone effect I'm also going to apply some to my forehead and to my nose I'm gonna go in with a smaller fluffy brush so I can get a little bit more precise with how I'm putting it on my nose I even kind of just messed that up just now with that big brush. Not too much product. And again, I'm starting at the eyebrow and connecting it down. So it's the two lines that go from the eyebrow all the way down to the tip of the nose. And when you're doing this, if the idea is to kind of make your nose appear slimmer, then you bring the lines in closer together. You don't have to follow the actual size of your nose, you bring it in, you cheat it a little bit, you bring it in closer than where your nose really is to make it look smaller. If you're just putting it genuinely on the sides of your nose, you are just enhancing what your nose really looks like. If that's what you're trying to do, cool, nothing wrong with that. If you like the size of your nose, if you like the way your nose naturally looks, follow the actual size and shape of your nose with your contour. If you're trying to make it look skinnier, bring the lines closer together. I see a lot of people talking about, oh, I'm snatching my nose, but they're just putting the lines like right where their nose 
just already is anyway. And it's like, you're not snatching anything. You're just accentuating your natural nose shape, which again, that's fine. If that's the look you're going for, I do like to accentuate like the button nose effect at the tip. So I apply it underneath and a little bit on top right here. Then I'm kind of like blending it into my crease where you put eyeshadow. Like this darkness all kind of blends together here, if that makes sense. Again, switching back and forth between brushes to make sure everything is cohesive. And I'm gonna just take the same bronzer on a big fluffy eyeshadow blending brush and use that as my main eyeshadow. So I'm going straight in to my crease, kind of again, connecting it to the nose contour. This really isn't like an eyeshadow look. It's more just to accentuate my eyes, add some definition to the eyes. And then I'm kind of like almost winging it out on the sides. Like I'm dragging it out a little bit past my eyebrow and really like blending it up and out on the sides. Try to make it as blended and diffused as possible. From here, it kind of depends on how far I want to take it with the rest of my eyes. I really like this Makeup by Mario Master Mattes eyeshadow palette, which is just a bunch of matte, neutral, and brown tones. And so I'll take like some of these lighter tones on the first row and put that on my lid. So it's like a darker crease and a lighter lid. But sometimes I'll go in with like these medium brown tones on the lid. So it's more of like an overall darker look. Sometimes I'll do like a little bit of eyeliner with the super dark colors and take a little angled brush and do like the eyeliner effect with the eyeshadow. It just depends on how far I'm feeling like taking it that day. Today, I don't feel like taking it too far at all. So all we're gonna do is go in with this shade here, this kind of like beige tone, and I'm just going to pack that on my lid. So it's kind of barely noticeable, but it's just to kind of finish off the eyes a little bit. Then I'm gonna go in with the lightest shade in here and put that on my inner corner to brighten. I always feel like the inner corner needs to be brightened. Again, with the switching back and forth between brushes, I'm going back to that crease brush and just kind of re-blending the crease now that I've got everything else on. So it's all blended together. Then I'm gonna go in with this like smaller pencil brush and I'm gonna take one of these kind of like medium brown tones and run that underneath for a little tiny bit of lower lash line definition. I used to do like the old school Nicki Minaj thing where I just did not put a single thing on my lower lash line. You know how Nicki Minaj used to do like the heavy eyeliner and lashes and everything on top and absolutely nothing on the bottom. No shadow, no mascara, no nothing on the bottom. And I used to really think, okay. She needs to look on my eyes. So I am using the Morphe 9A palette and I'm just putting some color and she did put something in the little corner of her eye so I'm take this small brush from BH Cosmetics and take this little gold and put it in there. And then I'm going to line my under eyes. With this black from Wet n Wild. Yeah. And then I'm going to go back in with the brown that I had used, which is Bruise. And go right up under. Just to bring everything together. So, let's go. That, that look suited me the best, like suited my eye shape the best. So I would rarely like put anything on my lower lash line. These days, I do like a tiny bit of definition. I still don't really ever do lower mascara, but just enough to say, hey. Okay, 
she don't do no lower mascara, but this girl needs her lower mascara. So, not mascara, y'all. I'm going to take. Nope, not that. I'm going to take the Sky High from Maybelline. I'm going to put this on my bottom. Just put a little color on top of it. So let's keep going. The bottom of my eye is there. Okay, we didn't forget about her. So that's really it for the eyes. Moving on to the eyebrows, which oh. I saved for last on purpose. They did get makeup in them though so i do need to clean them off i just take a regular dry q-tip and kind of rub them to get some of that excess product off of them my eyebrows are microbladed i get that question all the time they are microbladed which basically means that they are tattooed on microblading is where they tattoo on little hair strokes into your eyebrows to make them look fuller and just like more perfectly shaped and kind of give the effect that you have your eyebrows filled in all the time so i've been getting that done for a few years now you do have to get it touched up because it does fade over time it fades faster than like a normal tattoo since it's on your face um and i have not gotten mine touched up in definitely over a year i don't even remember the last time i got them touched up so they're not fresh they're a little faded right now definitely but it does still help like give me the general shape of my eyebrows because without the microblading my eyebrows are kind of like thin and sparse and just like they don't grow perfectly in this perfect arch that I would want them to grow in. When I have a full face of makeup on, I still need to fill in my eyebrows. Like it doesn't compare to like actually filling in your eyebrows. It's more so for when I don't have makeup on. But when I do have makeup on, I'm doing a full face of makeup including the brows. Like it just is what it is. So I really like this NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. It's a super skinny little like pen marker almost. And I use it in the shade Brunette. And I literally go in and draw on little individual hairs wherever I feel like I need it within my brow to just kind of darken my brow, make it look thicker, make it look fluffier, add some extra hairs here and there, bring them back to life. So I'm going to use my Maybelline Tattoo Studio in the shade medium brown. I don't know how I feel about this. Because usually their brows would be called. So I'm going to go in and just line the bottom of my eyebrows. So I don't make them fit in. They got covered with foundation and everything. I try not to go too heavy with it because I don't want my eyebrows to look too, you know, heavy and blocky and like just too much for my face, especially when I have like lighter hair. This hair is actually kind of dark around the root, but like it is blonde. I don't want my eyebrows to like look crazy in comparison to my hair. I know I'm kind of jumping around, but now I'm gonna go in with my blush. I did the cream blush, but we gotta top it off with powder blush. Blush. So I'm using the Juvia's Place. I love this blush. This is their blush duo in volume four. And I'm just going to go in with the bottom shade with a fluffy blush brush. And I'm going to apply it in the same spot that we... Okay, so they are using Juvia's Place. And I'm going to be using Black Radiance. Um, I got the artesian color in the shade Toasted Orange. Toasted almond. So 
really like this color. And she said, apply how she applied. The creams are like really high up under my eye and doing like an upwards motion up my face. And I like a lot of super Barbie pink blush. A little bit down the bridge of my nose. Then I'm gonna go in and highlight my nose with this um, NARS Orgasm highlighter. It's like a champagne golden highlighter. There's so many highlighters that are similar to this in the world. This is just the one that I always use. And I use a little small brush like this, down a straight line down the bridge of my nose. And I do my little dot at the tip of my nose. And I really feel like that just completes the nose. Like it's not complete without the little shimmer exclamation point. <laughs> And then why not add a little bit to the inner corner of my eye for a little extra pop. It really just like, bink, you know, opens up the eye. And I like to put it on my brow bone. I don't really put it on my cheeks anymore. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I put a little bit. Maybe I'll do like a little bit today. Not nearly as much as I used to do. I used to do like, you know, you want the highlighter popping on your cheekbone. I just don't really do that anymore. It's more about the blush these days for me. And then I guess the last thing I can do is carve out my contour by going back in with this triangle powder puff and my translucent powder and using the straight line of this puff to my advantage, I can go in and stamp out where I wanna snatch my cheekbone right there. Ew, don't look at my lace. <laughs> kind of stamp that on and then brush the excess away. And then more setting spray. A lot more, cause this is the final set. Fan it down. Of course, the very, very last thing is the lips. I always go for some sort of nude lip, pretty much. And that's the one thing that I tend to kind of like struggle with. I don't really have like a super like tried and true go-to lip combination. You'd think that I would by now, but I think it's because I try so many things, I forget what I tried or what I even use and I'll do something and I'll be like, oh, this is cute. And then I look and I'm like, I don't even know what lip liner I just used because I have six lip liners on my table and like, I don't know, I need to figure it out. But I try to go for kind of like a brownish, nudish lip liner and then a your lips but better type color. So like my actual lip color, something close to my actual lip color for the lipstick and or gloss. So I'm gonna wipe off this excess lip plumper just so it's not too like greasy. I always have trouble finding the perfect lip liner. I'm gonna go in with this KKW Beauty Nude number three. It's like a nude brown. I think I would really wanna use nude number two because it's a little bit lighter. This one's like a little dark for what I'm going for today, but I can't find my other one. Yeah, this one's pretty dark. This is more of a nighttime lip and I do overline a little bit. I do get lip filler. Similarly to my eyebrows though, you have to get it touched up and I haven't had mine touched up in like over a year. But with help from the lip plumper and overlining, I like to get that howdy rounded effect. Then I'm gonna go in with this NARS Air Matte Lip Color in the shade Surrender. And then I also have that same thing, it's so beat up, but this is the same product in a different shade and the name is completely wiped off, so I don't know. But it's a lighter shade, so I'm gonna put that in the center and blend that together. So this would be kind of like the soft matte lip, but then I could also go over it with some gloss. This is the NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Madeline. Honestly, I don't think those two products like each other because they're starting to make like a weird texture on my lips already. Like I said, I'm not your girl. When it comes to lip combos, I'm not your girl. I struggle with lip combos every day. So that's not my strong point. But long story short, I try to go for some sort of nude lip like this is usually my go-to, a darker liner with a slightly lighter natural nude um, lip. So yeah, this is pretty much the finished look. My hair is not really fully done right now. Excuses, excuses, I know. But this is pretty much the finished look. My recent go-to glam, full face, full coverage, but still kind of natural glam with the baby doll blush, the lash extensions with the struggle nude lip makeup look. <laughs> so here it is. And those are all the products that so I'm just adding on my glossy gloss. So I'm using the gloss. I'm using a butter gloss, which she used. And I'm using in ginger snout. I don't know what the heck that is now. Look. Let's 
So, this is a final look. It is definitely different. I don't know how I feel about the nose contour. It looks like it's just more prominent and more than what I'm used to. But let's let it down the hair. The hair, ah! The hair will, will tell me if I like it. Gotta fluff her up. Okay. So the hair pulls the look together. Yeah. Still don't know how I feel about it, but it's growing on me. I like the pink. I like how she did the concealer and the blush. Your girl's not a cream blush, but I can do a cream if it's like that. It's a little muted. But if you like this video, if you follow Raven the least, makeup tutorial, let me know down below and let me know who other YouTuber celebrity or whoever else that you would like me to follow. Bye guys.